Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to take advantage of virtual copies to create different effects in your photos without having to have duplicates of your photos taking up a bunch of space. You can play around and have as many effects as you want and not take up any extra space. You can have That's why they're called virtual copies. You can have one photo and deliver it a variety of different ways. So uh, I believe in the title, I may have said this is a black and white tutorial, but really it's about virtual copies. Let's go ahead and take a look. So in uh, this case, I've got some shots here that I took um, a few years back in uh, Antelope Canyon, but the one I'm interested mostly in is the car. I'm gonna hit the letter D or just click develop to take it into the develop module and I can see that it can this shot can use some work. So I don't really use it a lot. I just hadn't taken the time to go in it and do what it needs to be done. So first and foremost, I can see the colors off. It's got like a blue cast to it. And this is the desert, so it should be a lot warmer. So let's go ahead and just click anywhere where it should be 18% gray, black, or white. So that car is black, and that warms it up quite a bit. Now, of course, I can still adjust it down or higher. It's, you know, um, white balance is a taste thing, even though it's technically it can be correct, but it's really what you like best. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and crank up the vibrance a little bit. And, I, you know, it's a landscape, not a person, so we can really crank up the clarity a little bit more. And um, what I want to do is the sky is really washed out, so let's take care of that with the uh, graduated filter. And we'll just go ahead and pull that down. And in this spot, then we're just going to go ahead and uh, just, uh, we're going to cool this off quite a bit. We're just going to make it bluer. Oh, and we'll drop the exposure down a little bit. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, and again, I was working with nothing in the sky and at least gave it somewhat of a sky there, at least a tint or a hint of blue. And we can tone it down or up if we want it more. All right, anyway, we've got our um, car and now I want to take what I've done so far, but apply different effects to it without disturbing this one. Cause maybe I want to come back to this one and do more. So I'm going to head back out to the grid, just hit the letter G and now I'm going to go ahead and ask for a virtual copy. Now I normally do this from the keyboard, so I always forget where it is in the um, in the menu. So bear with me for a split second while I find it here. And it's probably jumping out at everyone. Everyone's saying, no, it's right there under photo where you first went. You're right. It's under photo, uh, create virtual copy. It's, it's also on the Mac keyboard, command quote, PC control quote. That's where I normally do it from. But here we are. Command quote, and you notice that that gives it a, a copy in Lightroom, and it's only in Lightroom at this point, and that little dog ear lets me know that that's the virtual copy. And I can have as many virtual copies as I want. So here, command quote, there's another one, and we'll do another one. Doesn't matter, they're not taking up any extra space. Now, on this first one, the only thing I wanna adjust is the crop. This needs to go on a, on a document that's tall, not wide. So I wanna crop it that way. So we hit the letter R to take us into our crop. Got it, joke, crop, okay. And next thing we wanna do is we wanna, um, I wanna crop this, but I want to switch the axis that it's gonna be cropped on. So I'm gonna hit the letter X to switch it. And then I can reposition it or recompose it in the crop area to kind of get this, there's not much of a choice here, but centered. And again, depending on the aspect ratio of the magazine, I could go out a little bit wider. Uh, most documents are a little bit wider than they are that tall. Okay, so now hit the letter R again to get out of the crop tool. And now I have a version that's cro not cropped. And I have a version that's cropped. Now on this next one, and maybe I could have made a virtual copy from the cropped one if I wanted to keep working on the tall one, but I don't. On this one, I want to apply a black and white look. So Lightroom has some black and white presets. Of course, you can go out and get some better ones or fancier ones, or you can even use plugins like Silver Effects uh, from Nick. There are all kinds of ways to do black and whites um, that will give you a variety of different results. But I'm just gonna use one of the built-in ones here so that way you have it too. And I can pick the one I like best. Uh, probably look number one. It's probably the best one for this photo. And again, you decide. All right, so now we've got our original, our tall version, and our black and white version. And again, I could go in and play around with uh, any of these effects. 
So if I want to adjust the black and white that Lightroom did, I can adjust it to my heart's content, um, adjusting this photo to, you know, to get the black and white that I want if the um, preset didn't give me exactly what I was looking for. So I want to bring out the shadows here and there we are. All right, so we have one more virtual copy. What could we possibly want to do with this one? Well, we cropped, we applied a black and white. Maybe in this case, I want to apply um, a toning effect. So, in, or uh, in this case, I'm going to go to the um, hue, saturation, lightness, color, and black and white. So we'll go to black and white. And again, we can adjust our black and white this way by just adjusting, because Lightroom still knows what the colors are. We can go to color and we can adjust each color. So I can take the color uh, yellow and adjust it you know, up or down for the hue or the saturation of it. And I can go ahead and play around with these different color effects to kind of give me a, a mixed toned image. In other words, where I'm keeping some of the color, but I'm toning it down. And last but not least, all right. So now I have multiple versions of my photo to deliver to my client so that they can pick the ones they want. Because none of this is real. None of these uh, images are taking up space until you actually export them. Once you export them out of Lightroom, then they become real images in the format that you export them out in. So file export, choose whatever format you want, JPEG, TIFF, RAW, whatever it is. Not raw in this case because we made edits, but whatever it is, and you will get those adjustments. Um, and again, this is all non-destructive, so I can go back to any one of these. I can delete the virtual copy, or I could uh, adjust any of this uh, information in the develop module. And of course, you can also use your adjustment brush if you want to do more localized adjustments in a particular area of a photo or a virtual copy. Now, what happens if you go back and make changes in the original? So if I were to go into uh, the original, for example, since they're all based on that original, and I do something in the original, such as remove a spot. Let's see here, let's get our spot tool bigger. All right, I remove that little canister or whatever that was in the ground there. And now if I go to one of my other ones, um, it has not been removed. So your virtual copy is safe from any adjustment, oops, wrong photo, safe from any adjustments you make in Lightroom. However, if I go back to the original and I edit it in Photoshop and I were to remove that spot, that's making a permanent change to the pixels of the original image and all the virtual copies would then be updated. So depending on what you're trying to do, if you want localized adjustments on a particular virtual copy, you're great in Lightroom, but if you want them to be permanent, meaning I want to make a, a real adjustment to this photo that, apply, that ripples throughout my virtual copies, then I would do that in Photoshop or something that's actually going to change the pixels of the image. Your choice, uh, of course, the Photoshop way is a more destructive way versus the Lightroom way, which is more non-destructive. But that's it for this episode. We went a little bit over there, got kind of a little lost in the weeds at the end there, but you got the idea. Virtual copies are your friend. We saw how to do black and whites a variety of different ways. And uh, that's it for this episode. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next one.